Hi folks, today I'm going to walk you through how to set up an APA style paper in APA's 7th edition. Um, this is really important. This is going to be for a student version of an APA style paper. Uh, last year, in the latter half of 2019, uh, APA rolled out new guidelines, their 7th edition guidelines, and in those guidelines, they now differentiate between a student paper, something that you're writing for an instructor, and a professional paper, which you would write to have published in, say, a journal or something of the like. If you need to write a professional paper, uh, I will be creating a separate video with those guidelines. So this is for you if you are a student looking to format a paper for or to turn into your instructor. Okay. All right. So um, APA made a few things easier, especially for Google Docs users, which is fantastic. Um, the first thing that you need to know is you are no longer encouraged to only use Times New Roman 12 point font. So you can use Arial 11 point, you can use Calibri 11 point, um, you can use uh, serif fonts. There's a variety you can use such as uh, 12 point Times New Roman, you can use 11 point Georgia, but you have to make sure that you pay attention to the font size. So you can't use 12 point Calibri, you can't use 12 point Georgia, you have to make sure that you're using um, kind of standard font sizing. So I still recommend Times New Roman 12 point font. This is what I require for my students and that's what I'm going to use here. One thing that you need to remember is that when you enter the header in Google Docs, it defaults to Arial 11 point. So you need to change that to whichever font you're using. So beginning here, we are going to start off with the page number. One really nice thing is that uh, APA no longer requires the words running head on the first page. And for student papers, they don't require a running head at all. So you can go into insert, you can go to page number, and you can insert the page number on the right hand side. If for some reason it still places, if your cursor was over here, and if it placed your page number over here, it's no big deal. Just come up here, click right align, and it will put it over here where it's supposed to go. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to set up your title page. Remember that an APA style paper has three or four sections depending what your instructor requires. Um, the first section is the title page and that's what we have here. So press the enter key say three or four times. I'm going to go with three. Um, APA now requires that titles on the title page and at the beginning of the essay are in bold. So we're going to hit bold and we're going to say your title in whoa, title case. All right. So this means that you capitalize your title as you normally would. Remember that APA requires all words of four letters or more to be capitalized, even if they're prepositions. Okay, so capitalize all the significant words and any word that is four letters long or more. Then we're going to shut off the bold and we're actually going to press enter twice and we're going to include the rest of our information. So your name is what's going to come next. After that is going to be your affiliation. So your school name is going to come here. The next thing is going to be your class name. So I teach um, a writing 201 class. You're going to place the course number, okay? And then you're going to put the title of the course. So whatever that looks like for you. Then you're going to put your instructor's name with their honorific. So if they're Dr. So-and-so, for instance, then you would put doctor here. Um, otherwise, if they have like a master's degree or if they're, you know, a licensed clinical social worker or whatever, don't worry about that. But if it's doctor or Mrs. or Mr., whatever they prefer, you're going to go ahead and put that here. Okay. Then you're going to have the date that the assignment is due. So if I require this for my students on March 31st, I'm going to have March 31, 2020 right here. Now, um, same rules apply as previously. Everything in your paper is going to be double spaced. So if you are on a uh, Windows PC, I recommend hitting control A. You can also highlight everything. Um, if you are working with a Mac, you're going to hit command A and that's going to be select all. Then come up here and you're going to choose spacing. You're going to use double spacing and there you go. Um, 
The reason that they tell you to hit enter either three or four times is because you do not want to come any lower than this four and a half inch mark right here, okay? That four and a half inch mark is your limit. Everything else on this page needs to be above that line. As long as it's above that line, this can be higher on the page. Um, it could probably come down a tiny touch more. We like it the way it is, so um, we're gonna go ahead and leave it right here. Now, to get to the next page, you don't wanna press enter a whole bunch of times because Microsoft Word is going to keep track of that. Um, so we are going to hit control enter. That's going to bring us to the next page. And then if your instructor requires an abstract, okay, you should know your instructor should have told you whether or not, um, they are going to require that. So if they do, you're going to put the word abstract here and it's going to be in bold. Um, the shortcut to do that is to hit control B or you can click the bold button. Okay, an abstract is a brief and comprehensive summary of your paper. It's easiest to write a summary of your paper after you've already written the paper. So don't try to write the abstract before the paper is done. Okay, um, there is no abstract, or excuse me, there is no indent on the abstract paragraph. Why? I don't know why. They're usually published without indents um, in journals and such, and so you don't have to worry about indenting them here. Okay? Um, I can provide more comprehensive information about the abstract in another video. In fact, I have. Um, in this case, we're just going to keep on going and handle the formatting. Okay? So, again, control enter to or command enter if you're on a Mac to get to the next page. So this is where your essay actually begins. You're going to have your title in title case. Again, this should be the same title as you had on your title page. Okay. So, um, this, this right here, this title and this title should match exactly. Okay. They should not have any differences between them. I'm going to shut off the bulb. You're going to press enter one time. We are going to left align. I'm going to hit tab for a half inch indent and your paper begins here. Remember that APA style is a type of formatting. It does not affect your content very much. Okay. Um, there's very little that has to do with the content. Some things about, you know, pronoun usage and commas and periods and stuff like that. But overall, there's not a whole lot that you have to worry about. So um, just write your paper as you normally would. Put in your citations if you're writing a research-based paper. If you're not writing a research paper, if this is a narrative, a definition paper, um, or a description, compare, contrast, something like that, that does not rely on outside sources, then you're done. Okay. Um, if you are writing one that requires outside sources, then you also need to include a references page. So after you've finished writing your paper, you're going to hit control enter or command enter again. Your other option is to go up here to insert and choose break and you can choose a page break. So notice that it defines the uh, keyboard shortcut right here. If you're on a Mac, this will be command enter. I'm going to hit this. That's going to take us down here to page four, your fourth section of the paper, which is your references page. Once again, they've changed this so that this appears here in bold. Okay, so you're going to shut that off as soon as you've typed out the word references. You're going to press enter one time and you're going to left align and you're going to begin putting in your references. Now, um, the same thing applies for the sixth edition as it did or for the seventh edition, as it did in the sixth edition, which is that you still need a hanging indent for your references. Um, some students have trouble with this, so I'm going to just really quickly put something together so that I can show you how to create that hanging indent. So bear with me. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to turn this off here. See, this is another thing that's changed. Oh, 
Okay. So um, you have a source or you have a reference that you formatted here and you need to put it into a hanging indent. So I am going to highlight this. Instead of trying to work with uh, Google Docs formatting stuff, which can be a little bit complicated and I found that it doesn't always work, the easiest thing to do is to come up here to the ruler bar you're going to grab the triangle on the bottom. You're going to click and hold and drag this to the half inch mark. And then you're going to grab the rectangle. You're going to click and hold and it's going to come back here. And here you have your half inch hanging indent just the way you need it. I hope that this is helpful for you. Um, please drop any comments or questions uh, down below and I will provide any additional assistance I can. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video.